So we've managed to reverse engineer the interface to this cute little uh, thermal imaging module. Now what should we uh, make with it? No, that's too obvious. Well, seeing as this module is so small, how about the world's smallest thermal imaging camera? Just a simple button on the front to turn it on and off. And just tilt it to one side to change the uh, pallet. There's no absolute measurements on this because um, we haven't got a shutter. I was thinking you might perhaps be able to get a sort of moderately accurate temperature by maybe putting your hand in front of it because body temperature is sort of vaguely consistent, but I haven't really got around to that yet. Uh, this case is just machined out of two pieces of 8mm black acrylic sheet and um, there's a split case with a joint down the middle. This is obviously used the iPod Nano stuff which works quite nicely. It's a 240 by 240 display so by just tripling the pixels that's a nice fit for the full width for the 80 pixels of the lepton and then with a little space at the bottom of some prompts this is just showing the upper and lower limits of the raw data and the battery voltage and there's uh, the usual uh, micro USB for charging. And the run time is a little bit over an hour. Um, if I was doing this from scratch I might look at using an OLED because um, I think that might be a little bit more power efficient because obviously we've got the backlight on the LCD which takes quite a lot of power but also because it's a fairly high res LCD we're throwing quite a lot of data around so with a lower res OLED that's closer to the sensor's resolution we could probably run things a bit more slowly and again save a little bit more power but I mean uh, an hour's run time on something like that I think is quite reasonable. I was thinking with a different mount you can maybe have a little sort of thermal imaging watch if you can mount the sensor on the end which might be quite a cool little gadget. Not particularly useful but uh, quite a fun cute little uh, gadget I thought. Well, I did a uh, just a ho simple homebrew PCB for the top. This takes the sensor and on the back there's the voltage regulators, clock oscillator and a little bit of power switching stuff and also the um, charger for the lithium cell. And this goes. This is connected to the uh, one, an old prototype board from the iPod Nano thing, with some of the flash memory and the power supply stuff taken off. It was a bit of a nightmare getting all this sort of wired in a way that it would actually go together. It would probably have been a lot easier just to do a custom board for everything uh, on balance, but uh, it's there and it's working. Um, on the side, there's some pads for the in-circuit programming, which uh, they go through some uh, just a set of holes in the side, so I can reprogram this without uh, taking the. Uh, case apart and there's the USB mini USB for, sorry micro USB for charging and then this just fits together there's just a, a ledge on the edge so they just fit together nicely and then there's um, holes on there for just for some tiny M1.6 screws to just pin it together. Uh, the edge finish, finish of this isn't brilliant I still haven't really got the hang of getting the right sort of feed and uh, machining speed from my cheap Chinese engraver but um, it does a reasonable job so this was just sort of machined out and then polished just to get, get a bit of shine on it so there's the, the uh, screws holding it together.